Nobody has ever decided that they don't like music or art or sports or whatever because it was too detailed. <laughs> That's just not true. Mr. Robin Black, fight analyst supremo. It's, you know, man, like to hang out and talk about martial arts, like there's nothing that's, I can't believe that's a job. Yeah, how did you know I get here? I mean? right? like, that's not a job. Uh, it's, yeah, it's amazing. We, we can hang out and talk about fighting all day. We'll do that. We'll welcome people to hang out with us. Oh, absolutely. But then when the camera goes off, we'll do it more. Oh, well, that's why I said I'm having, yeah. uh, we've already yeah. been talking and it's been great yeah. so far. So uh, now we're welcoming you in and uh, I didn't want you to miss too much. <laughs> <laughs> so we turned the camera on. Um, but yeah, uh, first of all, um, congratulations on your newborn baby yeah. girl. Yeah. yeah it's, you know, people tell you, you, you hear every human, every single human, it was a baby. <laughs> yeah. Somebody gave birth to that person. One way to put it, yeah. You know, as someone gave birth to you and every other person. And then all these people, oh, it changes your life. And then you, you hear them, but you don't actually know what it means. And mm -hmm. now I do. It's a wild thing. But it's changing how I'm even doing my job now. Really? Yeah. When I'm looking at fighting, yeah. suddenly I don't care um, about the narrative mm -hmm. so much. I don't care about their Twitter beefs. Okay. You know, I care about what deep meaning might exist in there now. Like what would I want to tell my daughter about why this is special? Suddenly I'm looking at it that way. There's meaning in, in fights, you know? Punches and kicks are really cool. Oh like yeah. <laughs> super cool. But you can look at a fight and you can see, learn something about how the strategy was put together in such a way that apply that to your job, right? right? You can watch somebody work their way out of a difficult position and apply that to being a better husband or a better friend. Right. You know, there's life lessons. I, I pontificated uh, philosophically all the time, but I like to say that the secrets to the universe lie within the sacred moments of combat. The sacred moments yeah. of combat. Yeah. Give me an example of a sacred moment of combat. It's all sacred. Like, I feel like we, we, do, we, we sometimes do it a disservice. These moments where two human beings are going to fight each other, every second of their life has been lived up until that moment to create what they are capable of in that moment. You know, fighting isn't just two guys punching each other or two women kicking each other. It, there is an adventure, there's a challenge that's happening there. Their secrets are being revealed, you know? Yeah. You're finding out, and th there are many cliches that we say, you know? Um, and my very favorite, because it's just, so, it started to feel so real, is like the moment of truth. Mm. Like, that's fucking truth right there. You know, there's nowhere to go. There's no one coming in to help you. You're alone here with your thoughts as a man is trying to beat you up in front of your mother naked from the chest up. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> uh, that's heavy. That's heavy. I'm, I'm laughing, but not because yeah, it's a light topic. It's heavy. Yeah. It's heavy. And you've been yeah. there. So that's one thing that uh, I'm a martial artist, but I've never fought in mm -hmm. um, full contact mm -hmm. in a fight other than sparring. Mm -hmm. But you have. So. How much of your own experience um, is in your analysis? Because now you're talking about more of a, a to, be, to use a word that may not be so popular to, to, to use in the fight world, but it's almost a spiritual yeah. understanding of combat yes. sports that you have. So, and, and you talk about you know, having a, a baby girl and how that's changed your spiritual outlook about fighting, but what about having actually been mm -hmm. in a, a mixed martial arts fight? Yeah, I, I had nine professional MMA fights and a number of other pro and amateur full contact fights and different types of martial arts. And uh, yeah, there's just so much truth in there. And, and it really takes, you know, it really takes a number of, of those experiences to actually know what's happening. And I, I don't try to say that from a, a facetious or judgmental standpoint. It's just true. Like, I'm, creating this number, but like 90% of the information is only available in the experience, right? It's only available in the experience. When we watch two human beings fight, what we see isn't what they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, the, the, the reality of it, you know, the, the fear and anxiety and, and the thoughts and the, the you know, the creating a, 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 a situation of freedom 
You need to be free. And the, the sports psychs will say you must get out of your own way. Okay. Right? You must get out of your own way. That is very hard to do. Certainly. It's very hard to do. And uh, it takes a while until it, you, you have the experience of, of success and failure are really important because what you will eventually find when you, when you are studying a fight, and you'll find it when you're in one, is even when you fail epically, you literally did the best you could. Mm -hmm. You literally did the best you could, the best you are capable of under the circumstances. And the circumstances were that it's loud and it's crazy and my brain just got, uh, got, got hit and I'm neurologically compromised and I can't breathe and I'm scared and all of that is happening and all of that is real. And, uh, and uh, you have to, I only, and I say this all the time, I only had nine MMA fights, only. Because when I look at somebody, only nine more than me, <laughs> and and but but twenty less than what I would know if I had twenty more, right. right? You know, I knew I understood more about the truth of the of the experience after three fights, and then after five, and after mm -hmm. seven, and after nine. And if I were able to have sixty, I would understand it in a much more deeply nuanced way than I do now. Um, it's only I can't possibly tell you what is happening in the mind of you know, Rafael Agaev, he's had hundreds and hundreds yes. of fights. His experience, I am not able to access his experience. Uh, but I will do the best that I can with what I've had. And now, not fighting anymore, being too old to fight, um, and I'm able to look at it a different way. So when I'm able to train martial arts, I can train it from the perspective of knowing, although this thing I'm doing today works beautifully, if everybody was cheering and I just got kicked in the face and the corner, his corner was saying something to embolden him, mm -hmm. and all those things were happening, I wouldn't be able to do this the way that I'm doing it in the gym. And it's, it's, such, right. it's such a difficult thing to do. And, and the more you do it, the more you realize how difficult it is to fight a human being in front of everybody. And it's different from when somebody judges a fighter and says, oh, they didn't do the best they could. What you're saying is, no, they in that fact That was did. the best he that's could. That's it. Yeah. And if, if that's not enough... If he could have done better, he would have. Right. And people, oh, well, he didn't try. That was him trying. Well, he quit on himself, quit, they'll say. Yes, and that was what he was capable of today. That was literally the most he was capable of today. And if somebody quit on himself, that was the moment he would break today. Yeah. You know, he didn't, there wasn't any more, or he would have done more. Today, that was what he had. Right. And uh, when you see, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a mixed martial arts fighter, people who watch karate combat are martial arts fanatics, experts. They yes. know that I don't need to tell people who Nick Diaz is. <laughs> right. but I, I was watching uh, Nick Diaz, and he's a very spiritual martial artist in his own way. And I was watching him, uh, and he was fighting a fight, when he came back to fight, and he got knocked down and he stopped. That was the end. Yes. And human beings on the, you know, in the world were saying he was a quitter. Do you know how, how long you have to not surrender to even get far enough to surrender in a cage fight? Do you know how many times you have to not quit in life to get to the point where tonight I couldn't do it anymore? Mm -hmm. You are a human, you, by definition, getting to the point where I had to surrender in a karate fight today mm -hmm. uh, means that I am not a quitter. Because I could have quit 100,000 times in mm -hmm. training and preparation, in the lead up, in some of my, today that was what you had. And it, it, it's a, there's a lot we can learn by watching the beauty of what fighting is. But among it is that there, it is illogical to, to cast judgment. Yeah. That guy today gave his very best. Sometimes you'll see a fight and it won't be as exciting. They're, they won't engage a lot. That's true. Right? Man. You'll see that. And people will be like, oh, they, you know, they did. And people will have a natural human reaction to, to be angry or irritated by that. That was what they were capable of today. And again, you have to experience that moment. Because if you ask two guys who didn't engage a lot an hour ago, what would be your greatest fear? They'd be, I just, that I didn't put on a great that I don't put on a great performance. Right. Yes, an hour ago, two hours ago, a week ago, a month ago, I just want to be able to go out there and really show what I can do. And yet in that moment, they can't. And then after, if you said, how did you do it? I just wish I could have done more. Yeah. But in that moment, they cannot. Yeah. They cannot. The, the combination of 
fear and anxiety and the training of your brain attempting to protect itself, you can't mm -hmm. overcome it. You that's, cannot overcome that's it. almost evolutionary what you're talking yeah. about. Because martial arts is in a sense a deprogramming of innate um, uh, impulses, yep. right? And because, I mean, that was what martial arts was for me. And when I was young, I was very angry. Mm -hmm. And at, when somebody would pick on me or, or I would have a dispute with somebody, it was always anger. Mm -hmm. And the anger doesn't really accomplish anything. It, nope. It's self-destructive, I yes. think. Yep. Um, and you hear about fighters who, who, they'll use this turn of phrase, uh, it's almost become a cliche, but like, uh, it's in Cobra Kai, you know, like, yep. use your anger, yeah, yeah, put yeah, it yeah, into yeah, the fight. Yeah, yeah. And I think that um, although that has become a cliche, if you if you phrase it better, yeah. instead of just uh, use your anger, if you say, you know, process your anger and, and, and see how that energy yeah. is better used yeah. in this strike you're about to perform. Yeah, uh, you know, embrace it maybe is the wrong word. Um, but use it, you know, like connect to it, honor it. It's uh, there. That's who and what you are right now. And right now we need you to fight. Yeah. So you can't be a different person. You are this person <laughs> and you are having this experience and make that experience a part of what, what's happening. But yeah, it's, it's a fascinating thing. And when you say something has become a cliche, this is my, so I'm obsessed, right? This, I'm obsessed. Yes. This. And I will be as long as I live and I'll be on a permanent, never-ending quest to understand the reality of what we're seeing more. Mm -hmm. And to, in, for me to do that for my own pleasure as well as for my job, um, at, you, you get to these plateaus at certain points where it's hard to, to go past them. And what you're speaking about is one of those things, this sort of cliched where the words take on a limited meaning. Yes. You know, so, and we do that a lot with things with art and, and science and fighting and, and uh, you know, athleticism, we get to a point where we, th we have words and then we think they know, we know what they mean, therefore we understand the thing. Right. And that's very limiting, right? When we, so we'll say, that guy's got crazy power. Well, power is not something you have. Power is something you harness. You, you, you know, or they'll, somebody will say, knock out power in both hands. This is bone and skin. This has no inherent power. Right? Mm -hmm. So the words we're using actually trick us into understanding things less. And the more that, that fighting that has been westernized and commercialized, um, you know, when we can watch, especially mixed martial arts on television a lot, you mm -hmm. see this, where you know, we see the same narrative, the same storyline, and we think we understand it, but that stops us from understanding it. Yeah. You know? We have to go deeper and we have to examine the language, you know, and, and speaking of cliches, I'm, um, I'm Canadian and uh, there's my father's native and there are some, what people will call Eskimo, there's Inuit is what yes. actually, what is the actual the preferred, the, the term. preferred term. And the Inuit, we, uh, people have heard this I'm sure a million times, have 16 different words for snow. Right? Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> uh, and, and that sounds like a thing you just say, but, but why? Well, because snow is so important to their daily life, they have to understand it more deeply. Mm. And to understand something more deeply, you need more language, mm. right? Um, so if every single time one of our fighters punches and I say, big right hand, big right hand, nice front kick, beautiful low kick, over time, I'm blurring the, what is possible to understand. Because mm -hmm. now, the, every, if every right hand is a big right hand, by definition, no right hand is a big right hand. Right. right? If every fight is a highly anticipated fight, mm -hmm. then no fight is a highly anticipated fight. Yeah. Right? We're, we are, we're commodifying the language, which prevents us from understanding. Karate, martial arts, is so unbelievably complex. Yeah. It's also simple. It's, it's also simple. He's going to punch that man. He's trying not to let him. He sure. wants to win a fight against. That's true, but it's also deeply complex. What's happening in the neurology? What's happening in sort of the biochemistry of the brain? How somebody sees something philosophically? What is what is the experience that they're they're having at the time? How the brain is capable of seeing this thing coming at it and making a, a movement? How does that learn? What does that feel like? What is that? All of that is fascinating. Yeah. But if I just keep yelling, big right hand, crazy power, who's the goat? Uh, wh what's next for these guys? If I just keep doing that, yeah. ultimately we stop learning. We stop ex examining. We stop going into the depth of it. 
And in the depth is where all the beauty is, where all the learning is. I'm going to be a better father or a better friend or a better citizen or get better at playing piano by understanding fighting. Yeah. But I can't understand it if we keep using the same language and we think that, that we understand it, right? So it, it's a permanent quest to, to go deeper and go deeper. And there are these, these things that block our examination of it. And one of them right now is language. You know, it's, it's the language of sports television. Mm. And that's why Karate Combat right now is one of my very favorite things to do. Um, because we don't have to use that language. That language, that limiting language, we don't have to use it anymore. You know, if you worked for you know, a, a big boxing show, or if you worked for the UFC, or if you, you'll have to use some of these languages. There'll be production that says, have speak notes. about it, you'll have notes. This is how we talk about this. Mm -hmm. Well, not here, right? We can talk about some of these more, you know, special and, and rare and unique things. We can learn by watching these men and women fight. We can learn about life. Well, let's do that. Let's talk about some of these individuals. Mm -hmm. And um, I do want to say, though, before we segue there, that it strikes me that you have this deep sense of responsibility. That fight analysis may be a passion, but it seems like there's a, a professorship uh, aspect to it. Is that true? I, I, it's just to me, it is, I, like I said, I, I think the secrets to the universe are in there. Yeah. I do. I th I th and I think we just do an incredible disservice by packaging it up like Coca-Cola or McDonald's or whatever and getting it out every week and getting it, pushing the story, push to the next event. All this sports stuff feels really old now. Mm. And it, there's a lot in there. And we're not seeing it. And it feels important to me. It feels important like a responsibility to find the truth. Yep. Uh, but it's also important to me. Like this is my, what I do. Like, uh, this is how I understand the world. Like I understand the world by watching people punch each other. You know, so it's almost a know thyself uh, I need to understand it. You know, I'm a better human being because I study martial arts. And, and, I, and there are other, yeah, there's other elements to it too. I, I think our nature right now, we think that our opinion is important. We think it's important. Mm -hmm. and, and in a lot of situations, you know, if there's somebody in my ear and I'm sitting at a desk and we're wearing a suit and we're mm -hmm. talking about fights on Friday, the, a, a producer might come into my ear and say, have a strong opinion, debate it strong, hold your, your and then we'll, you got this guy and I got this guy and we're gonna argue about it. We're kind of, we're all imitating that behavior. We're all watching, whether it's uh, sports or politics or news or the Oscars or whatever, we're watching human beings argue about nonsense all the time. To me, and I understand that part of your job at first is, you know, sell the thing, get a buzz, you know, create, get some butts and seats, whatever all that stuff is. Because on one hand, yeah. we do want to pay the fighters, you know what I mean? Yes. And we want to create more jobs for more fighters, and we want yes. more entertainment for more fights. That's right. So it is an element that, that has to be considered. My belief, so now I get to, I get to like, talk about fighting and somehow in the last three or four years, I get to do it the way I like to do it. I don't know how that happened. I don't know exactly when that happened, but I believed a few years ago it was very difficult that I would try to reject my own opinion as much as possible mm -hmm. for the purpose of understanding it more. And in the short term, people, you know, different producers and different, you know, people in creative uh, spots pushed back on me, but I felt like if you keep going, you'll come out the other side and there'll be something really useful and unique in here. And it seems like we got to that point now, where all of a sudden, nobody's telling me to have a strong opinion about which one of these guys, you know, make a pick and, and defend it. Right. Now, instead, I can, I can look at all this deep, nuanced beauty about the fighting. And, and, and so, it's, I'm just in this pocket right here where I get to do it different. And I was sure that that would be valuable to the audience and the fighters and whatever. I was sure of it, um, but you know, now I think, now I think it's true. Now I think you do. There is a world where if we keep yelling, big right hand, beautiful low kick, you know, knockout power in both hands. This one's going to be fireworks. If we keep just saying that shit over and over again, eventually it's so commodified that different will be will be good, and now different seems to be I get rewarded for do, being able to do it different uh, in the way that I love. This is, this is my favorite art form. It's the, it's the ultimate art form to me. I think a lot of these you know, big conglomerate corporations, they, they misunderstand a certain piece of marketing. And I am a professional marketer, so I, you know, I'm one of the bad guys in a sense. 
But on the other hand, um, I'm also an authentic person. Uh, nobody told me how to dress for this oh. show. Oh. You know, I was able to just, this is my style. Oh. I wanted to wear the cap, oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So cool. that's, a, that's a different thing, and that's, that's authenticity. And I think when you put marketing in front of authenticity, instead of marrying the two concepts, who, like if I wanted to market a fighter, Okay, I want to really actually understand uh -huh. who that fighter is. Yeah. I don't want to say, okay, we know he's got really shredded abs, so make sure you yeah. know shirts off. Da, da, da. Yeah. No, mist him down with water. You know, right. like that, exactly. Uh, you know, zoom in on the the glove. Or, yeah, if know. he wouldn't, because there are there are get, get him like get him wrapping his hands and skipping, and we'll get yeah. that, and you know, get the wide scan of that, yeah. and we'll mist him down. You know, the formula. Yeah. Yeah, formula. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. They think it does. They think it does. They're they're incorrect. And I've had this conversation many times um, where people will be like, you know, we got a lot of casual fans watching. You don't want to get too complicated. It's like nobody has ever decided that they don't like music or art or sports or whatever because it was too detailed. <laughs> That's just not true, right? right. Also, if, if p people who love, like, so Karate Combat has a specific group of real hardcore karate fans, people who love karate combat. Yes. Those are the people you want to service. Yeah. Those are the people that you want to, to give them what, if you under service the people who love you the most, mm. to be able to, what you believe is sufficiently service somebody who pops in and grazes your stuff, that doesn't make sense. Right. The people who love you the most, you are under delivering to them because you are prioritizing somebody who might pop in on the weekend one time. Right illogical right completely illogical and many of the things that we do by watching fighting people will say you know always kick this way never do a certain no. thing not true can't be true N never it n almost never is it true yeah you can't say never because you're doing it right rarely say almost and never that's that's the way I like to look at it. <laughs> rarely do we want to say almost and never because it's so rarely true people are like always keep your hands up not true, mm -hmm. right? That's not true. There are many reasons to have your hands down. Thousands of important reasons you may have your hands down. Um, baiting, something else, I want, yeah, I want you. If I drop my right hand, why is that bad? Well, because you can punch me in the face. Of course. What if I want you to try to punch me in the face? I drop my right hand. Like it's super simple, right? Yes. And so it is not true. Always keep your hands up. Uh, if you believe it's true, you are not living within the reality of the fight itself. Same thing with the way that we present things. You know, when we build a show, when we'll build, somebody will build a rundown and they'll say, okay, we're gonna go to camera B, Robin, look in camera B, now talk about this guy's kicking game. Um, the reason that structure exists is because once upon a time, what they call B-roll, they're gonna roll footage of Bruno Assis kicking. Yeah. And, they, and so they, that used to be, one, very hard. Mm. It took a long time to build that. Can you explain that? So today, a 12-year-old can clip you a, a quick clip uh, from Karate Combat and fly it into their podcast. Yes. Right? But 10 years ago or 15 years ago, you needed editors, you needed talented people, you needed a... a it, it took hours. Hardware. Hardware. Yeah. Like, it was hard. So it was valuable and it was rare. When we, when we open a show and we're going to be, we're here live from New York City and we're going to have a, a picture of the Statue of Liberty yeah. and then we're going to show all the, the cabs in New York zipping down the street yeah. and you know we got an epic main event between two absolute warriors yeah. defending the, and we get into that <laughs> shit, right? Yeah. Why are we doing that? Because right. we've always done it. But mm -hmm. also it made more sense because once upon a time you just couldn't see the Statue of Liberty a thousand times on YouTube just by looking at it. Right. So it was rare. It was more interesting. It was, it was rare. And, and scarcity has inherent value. So because, mm. you, and we're here in Brazil, and we'll show the, up the hill on the, the shot of Christ. The yes, Redeemer. of course. Yeah, beautiful yeah. shot. Yeah. Once upon a time, you couldn't look that up on your phone. Right. You would never saw that. Seen it so times. thousands of times, yeah. right? So it doesn't have the same value, yet we still do it. Yeah. And when we go to show that footage of Bruno or, or you know, Roca uh, um, kicking, once upon a time, that was rare. The only time you got to see that knockout or that moment was in the broadcast because it had value. So we, it was so valuable that we had to make it in advance and then you and I would sit there and discuss around it yeah. because it was valuable. That's not valuable anymore. I can see that knockout. I have seen that knockout thousands of times. Before watching Karate Combat, I go online and I see it. Yes. So there's not inherent value in that piece anymore. And yet here we are still undermining our, the ability to do something meaningful 
because we need the structure of something no longer valuable, huh. right? So why do we need that structure? We, because people need, they feel like they need structure. There's a, and that's what, what, what the beauty of fighting in, when you go and fight all of the structures of life, you've got to pay your bills, you've got taxes coming up, you know, your, Pressure from mom. Yeah, your family doesn't want you to be doing any of this anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, the value of your house just dropped because COVID and you read all these uh, yeah. life, life, yeah. life, life. But now none of that exists. I'm fighting. Right. In to fight properly, there is nothing in the world except for this collection of skills and this body type in front of me. That's it. And me. And that's it. And it could be uh, destructive if you're still, you still are thinking yeah. about the pressure you, from yes, family. Yes, it and will all that be stuff. destructive. It will yeah. be destructive. You cannot do it. It will be. It will be destructive. There's no question that it will. It will you will not perform with the freedom that you need. And uh, can, can I, I want to yeah. dig on this freedom. Yeah. Um, you talk about, this is the second time you've mentioned mm -hmm. the word freedom. So I want you to kind of illustrate to people um, what is this freedom? Because freedom is such, it's, it's another one of those words like spiritual that mm -hmm. I used earlier, that it's, it, it seems to have a different meaning for every person you mm -hmm. ask. Uh, what is freedom to you? What is freedom to you? you know, everybody kind of tells me something different. So in this sense, what is the freedom? Okay. This is where the real beauty is. This is, so what we're seeking ideally Again, our language doesn't allow us often to quite get here. And even the limited language we have now, I can, we'll only be able to discuss it so deeply. We'll, yeah. we'll need to experience it. But what we're looking for in that moment, when we talk about, you know, he came in with a game plan. He wants to do X, Y, and Z. And he sees this, and then he does this. Those words aren't actually correct. What, what is happening, what Raphael Agaev is trying to do when he's fighting is exist in a state of choiceless awareness. Okay. It is a state of choiceless awareness. When that kick is coming at him so fast that he has to slip out of the way and counter it, uh, if you wait for the decision to appear, the moment is already gone. I see. Right? Uh, so when, right now we're talking, you, you and I are not, there are thousands of things happening. If I say to you, and I say to anybody watching it, you know, don't think about the texture of the roof of your mouth. Suddenly you're like, oh, that's you always there? gave it to me. Yeah. That is always there? Mm -hmm. Well, how come I'm not thinking about it? You're, we're doing this all the time, right? You know, feel the, the, the feeling of your feet on the ground, right? And now you're like, oh, yeah, they're there. Mm -hmm. We have all of this is all happening. Only we're yeah. not fighting a person in our underpants in front of everybody, right? <laughs> right? Now, none of that can exist. We need our brains to be able to have, while something is happening, make thousands and thousands of tiny calculations in tenths of a second. Uh, I sometimes use this analogy because people can connect to it. When you watch a fastball hitter hit a, a baseball, you know something's happening there that you don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, you know that you know that there is something that is happening. How can he do that? We can't do Not that. only that, they're aiming the ball. Like they're you know, yeah, some guys exactly. can say like it's I'm gonna yeah. put it between these two exactly. players so they can't yeah. catch it. Yeah. You understand intuitively that he must be experiencing that different than you and I would. Because sure. we would just see <laughs> yeah. the ball would go by and we'd like, how on uh. earth could we he be doing that? <laughs> yeah. Well the answer is, you know, tens of thousands of hours of training and preparation. Mm -hmm. So we understand when we see that. And then for some reason, when we see you know, punches coming that are traveling as fast as baseballs, dozens of them, simultaneously, baseballs coming at you from all mm -hmm. directions, why do, we don't understand in, intuitively that that's a different experience. That brain is working different than ours. Yeah. Brain, and how can that brain work like that? It has to be choiceless. You literally watch yourself make the things. And it's so fascinating. You're going to find this when you talk to these men and women uh, you know, after their fights. Mm. They will tell you what they did. And they'll describe it as if they chose to do those things. Mm -hmm. Because that's how we experience the world. We watch ourselves choose and we say, oh, I saw that he was favoring his this. And then you know, I, I started to set him up for this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's all true. Mm -hmm. But you watched yourself do it. I right? think it's more automatic. It is 100%. At its best, it is automated. At its best. At its best. You are automating all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's what training is. You have literally automated yourself mm -hmm. through training to hopefully make the right choice in the milliseconds where there's no time for conscious thought. There is no time for conscious thought. So when that's what we're talking about, uh, freedom. If you're thinking you're... And, 
even as I'm saying that, it's not quite right either, because again, our words are limited, but, but while watching yourself do the thing, there, it's almost like you'll have a second system okay. that can watch you watching that. Okay. Right? So there are different types of focus. There's external focus, there's mm -hmm. internal focus, there's sort of a mechanical focus where you focus on focus. Yes. And we start, in, as I say this kind of thing, everybody who you know, plays a musical instrument or has ever surfed or you know, has, is playing a game of a, a sport and they get in that zone and they're like, Every, everything just went in the net. We've all had uh, that experience yes. to a certain degree. The great flow are, state, some yes, people yeah, call it. Yeah, and, and it is, the flow is a, is a physiological state that we are trying and seeking to be in. And when they're both, when two fighters are in it, that's where these impossible things start happening. You're not watching the same as you and I now doing things. You're watching something very different, very rare and unique. And every moment of their life has built to the, these moments where now they can, and that's why fighters will surprise themselves. Suddenly this thing they never did ever, they did tonight. You know, because they created a state in which they were capable of allowing it to happen. It's freaky, man. It's freaky. And, and you know... Uh, if, if, you, yeah. if, you, if I may, um, I think this may be a bit meta, uh, but I'm presently, I feel that you're closer to a flow state presently right here in this room than I am because I, as, uh, as the host, have to kind of also think about, okay, what's the next thing I'm gonna ask Robin? What's the next yeah. thing? And it's, it's almost getting in between you and me. Um, and I feel that if there was no cameras, um, we would be in flow state and I could yes. enjoy you more. Yes. Um, and, and it would just be here, here's Dane Curley and here's Robin Black. Yep. Um, but because, yeah, I am, I'm, I'm 10 seconds ahead at times. That's right. Yeah, but you can, you, you, we are training ourselves to be capable of that. So uh, for us, a hobby is a, is a great coach. He coached George St. Pierre, Pierre, a very good friend. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine, yeah. Jonathan Brookins, my best yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jonathan was up in Montreal. I, I yeah, saw that's him right. Year. I saw him up there when, when we were going. Um, and uh, Faraz and I were talking about this five or six years ago, and he recommended this book for me. It's called Thinking Fast and Slow. I've read it. Yeah. Uh, Daniel so, Kahneman. Mm -hmm. This book is fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. And, uh, the System One and Two. Yes. I, that's exactly yeah. what I thought yeah. of when you said there might even yeah. be a second layer yeah. here. And we are training ourselves to allow the, the brain to be automated while fighting, while also training the other part. To, so system one would be, for example, uh, the differences in how our brains, these two specific ways that our brain often work, easy to understand. If I say one plus one is? Two. And I say 2,312 minus 50 times four is? You could do that. I could, but, but it would I'd be a different process slow. than one plus one. <laughs> one, plus one. Yes. You would think slow, you would write it all out. It would be a process through which you would gain the, the answer to that question. Right. Very different than one plus one is. Two. Right? Those two. Th right. We are trying to train ourselves to do these incredibly complicated things, like the long form math, automated as if it was one plus one. Mm. That's what a fighter is trying That's to do. That's martial arts. That's martial arts. Yeah. That's martial arts. And uh, it is so freakishly cool <laughs> that people are capable of doing this. And it is so difficult. It, it's a lifelong quest to try to find ways to allow people or, or offer it to people to be able to see that. Because in those moments, we're now understanding how to live life. The greats, Bruce Lee talked about, about this a lot. His daughter, Shannon, um, speaks about it today even that you're trying to get your life to a state of choiceless awareness, you know, mm -hmm. where every decision can be the correct one for you uh, because that was the decision that needed to be made and it was mm -hmm. made and it was made with, with less and less friction all the time. And your life becomes, your life opens up and starts to become a much more enjoyable thing. You know, we talk about second guessing or, or you know, analysis paralysis. Sometimes we'll go on Netflix and we'll literally just be on there looking. I spend two hours scrolling through something to find to something. find something. To find something. Yeah, oh, I'm guilty. Yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Uh, whatever you found. It doesn't. It, I it hope. Doesn't. It, really, tell it, me how it doesn't. It because here's mean, what I think when I'm doing that, and this might yeah, be relevant. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I'm digging for gold. Yeah. I'm looking for the best, yeah. most brightest gem yeah. because I don't want to waste my time mm -hmm. on some trivial show that, you know, okay, millions of mm -hmm. people are watching it, but maybe it's not going to give me anything intellectual. It's not going to build me better. So if I find the one synopsis mm -hmm. that yeah. is going to enhance me, and I think I'm is, doing something yeah, worthwhile. Yeah, and that there is a reward in it in the search, right? And that's why we do it. Um, but you would 
potentially could it have been more valuable to just spend those two hours make, making a decision, watching that thing, and absorbing everything it had? It's it's a debate, Interesting. right? It's a it's a debate that the uh, the action of choosing is in and of itself um, a, a form of procrastination. The the act of of being in a state of constantly deciding and choosing is a form of procrastination, potentially. Yeah. Oh, potentially, no, right? my partner in crime hates that I do this, and she yep. she's like, pick something. Let's and watch. In fact. <laughs> We spoke about sometimes there'll be a fight where somebody doesn't seem to be able to let go. Yes. They are literally scanning for options. They're literally scanning through It Netflix. was relevant. They're literally scanning through <laughs> Thanks for through getting, Net- getting me yeah. relevant. Yeah. They're, they're scanning through, sure. through Netflix. Yeah, they're, they're scanning. scanning. With, uh, spinning kick. Scanning through uh, Netflix. This thing, you know, like, should I throw? Uh, mm. If in doubt, if you spend five minutes wondering whether you, or not you, threw a, you should throw a jab, maybe throwing a jab would have been better than wondering. Maybe not. Mm. Maybe not. But these... <sighs> These are the things that. It's a beautiful question. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it. This is these things. I sometimes I won't sleep. I mm. won't be able to sleep just wondering about these things. And but then I'm caught up in it. Would I have been better to go in and watch a fight or analyze it or or listen to music? I, I like to watch fighting with music on now. I mm. don't listen really? to com- uh, commentary. Oh, to avoid the commentary. Yeah, yeah, and not for any reason. That it's. Uh, I had to avoid the commentary because human beings are very compelling yes. and we have a natural desire to imitate interesting people. Mm. So Joe Rogan, for example, One Joe Rogan, yeah, people. he's fascinating and he's a wonderful human being. Uh, he has been so generous with me and he's a really, really, oh, really, really generous human being. Um, he's compelling. Like the way he talks is cool. Absolutely. So what do we want to do? And we want to imitate it. And Joe Rogan commentates authentic for Joe Rogan. This really, it makes no sense for me to imitate him. Right. It's illogical. That only, when he says, this guy's a destroyer, <laughs> what I'm hearing is his lifetime of understanding martial arts phrased through his f- individual phraseology. So this guy's a destroyer is not inherently a useful sentence. But when he says it, it comes with all the decades of knowledge that is underneath it. So when we just imitate it, you know, or like for example, he'll. I remember one night watching fighting years ago, and he's like, "This guy's no joke," and and I didn't know that phrase. It's a very normal phrase now, but oh, I yeah. didn't. I really heard it, and I just remember thinking, "God, that's so in, unique to him." Because if you think about the words "no joke," of course it's not a joke. He's, you know, a serious fighter. He's a serious fighter. But if you think of the, to the way he phrased it, you heard his love and respect for this individual. Later, I've heard other analysts say to him, you know, hey, Joe, this guy's no joke. And I'm like, that's a Joe thing. Mm. And the reason it makes sense is because it makes sense authentically to that individual. No joke is not a piece of analysis. But it's <laughs> right, not. It's right. a, we've learned nothing. But it is because I hear his analysis mm. in it. So, and he's a comedian. He's that's a comedian. another layer exactly, of the no exactly. joke. Exactly. Yeah. Everything he does makes sense only for him. Yeah. And, when, and this is true of imitating a fighter, imitating a, 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 somebody who talks about fighting, imitating somebody who bakes, imitating mm-hmm. a guitar player if you're a guitar player. Right. You are, you're loving what is uniquely special about them, yeah. and your instinct is, well, I'll copy it. And you're not doing it on purpose, you're not doing it to steal, but the imitation will inherently not make it special. Right. Your, my version of imitating Joe Rogan is to be as me as humanly possible. That's how I'm like Because that's how he that's is. That's how he is. So me just saying what he says makes no sense. Me being authentic to me makes sense. That's true of a fighter. Yeah. That's true of, of somebody who talks about stuff. That's true of an analyst or a critic. That's true of a musician. That's true of everything. Um, that's the best version that you can be. And to do that, I had to stop listening to commentary because it's very compelling, you know, and and knockout power in both hands, striker versus grappler in a stylistic matchup. Winner gets the title shot. This one's going to be fireworks. It's got fight of the night potential all over it. If I just fucking it's all say in there. that, if I just say that, what am I doing? Like, I didn't dream of one day getting my chance to wear an expensive suit and say not a striker versus grappler, knockout power in both hands. Right. I my dream is to find truth in the beautiful moments of fighting. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I'm. 
I want to do. To accomplish that, I had to stop hearing these very compelling, very interesting human beings because human beings naturally we have mirror neurons. We yeah. copy. Like you know, once upon a time, if if we were out and we saw somebody in our group of of other humans, a tribe, whatever we were, take a stick and put it down an ant hill and eat ants, we'd all look and go, uh -huh. oh, "That's how you eat ants." What a and good now, idea! What a great idea! Mm -hmm. That's. We've done that as a species always, so we keep doing that. Yes. So mm. t if you, you cannot become an individual by imitating another individual. You cannot be an authentic individual. Um, on your way up, regardless of what you do, you're a karate, you're a boxer, a kickboxer, karate fighter, you, you do a, you're a martial art, at first you will learn. Somebody will say when you throw the, the, the lead hand punch, we're going to use the ball of our foot, we're going to step onto the ground, we'll turn our hip on the rear hand punch. When you throw the hook, you'll do this. So you're imitating your coach who's imitated his coach, but you do that only long enough to one day get to the point where you realize the uselessness of all of that. <laughs> That's not how you fight. You don't fight by having the perfect technique. You don't fight by always doing this and never doing, stay away from the power hand. Uh, 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 a uh, southpaw, always keep your front foot on the outside. All that is horseshit. Everything I just said there is untrue. You don't fight that way. Your opponent yeah. is not some rote copy of an idea. Exactly. Yeah. You, you go in and learn so much about fighting that you forget all the stuff and just fight. Mm -hmm. That's, but again, we're learning about life. That's how you do anything well. That's the purpose of our life. Whatever it is we're trying to do well or learn, we are going to rehearse it and practice it and imitate it and refine it, get, get deliberate practice with expert feedback until we shape it down to the point where we understand it so much, all of that doesn't apply anymore. And that's how you become great at anything. That's the goal. That's what you're seeking. And that's what you're seeing when you see the greats fight. You're seeing somebody who is trained for so long in the study of a of a, you know, of a physical expression uh, that is so incredibly complex that eventually it becomes simple again. Mm -hmm. He's just gonna, you know, at some point, he just punched the guy in the mouth. You know, <laughs> at some point that, but you have to be great to simply, you have to be, do so much work to get to the point where you can simply punch a guy in the mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a life, it's a lifelong journey to get to that point. And we, and I feel like we miss a lot of that in the world when we watch something, you know, we don't necessarily, we see greatness all the time, but if we don't see the process, the progression, what is, how is this guy a great karateka or baseball player or pianist or whatever? It was a process. They are a reflection of the work. And again, that when you see that freedom where somebody is fighting, that is, that is a reflection of their preparation. Yeah. The fight, it, and, and when we say sometimes, oh, this guy sucked tonight, he, he made this error. Why did he do this, bro? Like sometimes we'll do that. We're like, well, I don't, I don't understand why, why he, he, he kept throwing that right hand. Well, one, not, neither does he. And two, <laughs> if there's something about this that we find unsatisfying or stressful, what we actually are, you know, there's no logic in being frustrated about his or her choices now because that is a reflection of six weeks ago in the gym or 10 weeks ago or three years ago. Mm. Everything they are doing now is a, is a direct reflection of all the stuff they've done for weeks, months, and years of their life. So if you're mad or, or frustrated or your favorite uh, loses because they did X, Y, or Z, it is, oh man, why did he do that? He did that because that's how he's been training to think. Also, he's fatigued. Also, he's doing the very best he can possibly do in that moment. And so you start to learn to be more empathetic by watching yeah. that. That's, you, a, that's an know. amazing thesis statement, that they're doing the best that they, they can they do. They really are. They yeah. really are. And you have to fail to understand that. When, and I remember Rich Clementi is a martial artist. He fought, uh, he, had, uh, he had 50, 60, 70 fights. He had a lot of, a lot of pro MMA fights. And I remember once we were, uh, he was cornering somebody. I really like Rich Clementi, a uh, very, very great martial artist. And he was cornering somebody and uh, he said, you know, in the end, if you did your best, you should be proud. And I remember once saying, you know, this one night, I don't know if I did. And then he looked at me and goes, well, that's, if that were true, you should be ashamed, you know? But he's like, it's not true. Like, whatever you did that day, that's what you were capable of that day. And that truth is a heavy truth. Mm -hmm. When you when you go in and you know season four karate combat in the main event I'm there and I, I land a, a jumping spinning uh, hook kick and the the ring card girl takes a picture with me and Boss Rutan interviews me and everything goes amazing 
that's cool, great. But if you zigged when you should have zagged and got kicked in the head and your face is bloodied open and somebody is asking you, hey, um, uh, where are you? And you say, Monday. Uh, and you realize, you know, that's bad, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you did the best you could. And that <laughs> takes a long time to come to grips with it. Failure is a very important part of our life. Mm -hmm. It's a very important part of every person's life. And failing, the only way we will accomplish anything in life is we have to be prepared to go, try, fail, accept that pain, the reality. I failed. I went to fight. I trained my hardest for six weeks and I lost, or you know, for 20 years or whatever, and I lost. That's real. You're going to have to learn to deal with that. And, and, but when you do, you know, Monday morning or next week or when your knee heals or whatever happens, you'll go back and you start again. And you'll learn what you learned from it. And we must do that in our lives. If you're trying to avoid failure, you're avoiding living. Hmm. Right? And we'll learn that when we watch fights. You'll learn that. You know, Bruno Assis uh, lost uh, a title fight. Yes. You know, and he, and he Against, got uh, uh, Scribbers. Scribbers, yeah. He got beat up. Uh, but he's a better man for that. And you know, you don't always, you, don't always, you almost never get to choose what you're going to show in a fight. Don't usually, you're not yeah. supposed to say almost yeah. never. Yeah. All, almost <laughs> never. You so rarely get to choose what you're going to, what you're going to show in a fight. Mm. Uh, but you will get the chance to show something. And that something may just tonight be your, your guts or your heart or your will or your toughness. Bruno, the, on that night, that's what he was able to show. That's, right. that's, what, that's what that fight gave him to show. And, and show it, heart. he did. And he did. Yeah. He did, and he became a better human being for having fought that fight. When you see those two fighters, and Scrivers has the belt, and, and Bruno's face is all smashed up, mm -hmm. and you say, which guy would you rather be? In the long run, and this is tough, a tough to, to digest, but in the long run, you might rather be Bruno. But these are the, to me, this is all the beauty of it, you know. Um, a lot of the sort of the very corporate, the biggest corporate fighting shows are very narrative driven, very beef driven. You know, beef this guy driven. says this about him, and you know, what, how do you respond? Oh, this guy attacks this guy on, viciously on social media. It's like, it was words. Yeah, he yeah. didn't attack him viciously. He typed <laughs> some stuff into his phone, you know. And we we package all that up, and it's become. Well, well, I, I, at risk of interrupting yeah. you, we had um, such a thing happen in for season four between uh, Ross Levine yes. and Igor de Castaneda, yes. Yes. and uh, you know I spoke to both of these guys, and they both see it totally differently. And you know Ross's attitude is like. I was making a post yeah. on social media, yeah. and and he yeah. really yeah. he's really confused as to Igor's even being yeah. upset in the first place. I don't believe Ross. I know Ross well, <laughs> uh, and I say this actually with admiration. Yeah. Uh, all Master uh, strategist at yeah. play. Yeah. yeah, even saying yeah. I don't know what the big deal is is strategy, uh, right? Even that is. Like, you fooled me, Ross. Yeah. I believed you. Even it. that is. I believe Robin even, now. Even that is. Strategy, <laughs> right? Ross is a very highly intelligent human. Oh, yeah, doctor. And yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, very, very intelligent, great martial artist, brilliant karate guy. He's a very smart and, person. And, and, and these things are all in play, right? This is the other thing. It's like when we, oh, but bro, these guys really hate each other. Yeah. Again, if you say that a thousand times and then at the end they hug each other, uh, eventually you're not selling me on anything. When it is there and somebody wants to make more money, draw an audience, whatever, I get that. We all, you know, do our job the way that we do it. Some, you know, and if attention or, or money or these things are one of your primary motivators, then by all means, do it, it's your life, right? Sure. But I'm most interested when it is a tool, like a, stra a strategic tool, when, mm -hmm. when it's a art of war stuff, when, when you know that they're, because we've talked about fighting being free to fight, the state of choiceless awareness, allowing yourself to go out and express your training to the highest caliber. If you're irritated, that, that can get in the way of that. Absolutely. If, you, if, if he's pl put in some, some chips in advance that he can then use, you know, even sometimes when people speak to each other in fights or they physically do things or these things, sometimes those will connect back to the work that you've done. So I feel like Ross is doing a little pre-work, mm -hmm. you know, little strategic pre-work. Even denying it, I think, is part of what? what what's the big deal? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That, in a way, if there's any value to having him become irritated, and it's classic Art of War stuff, you know. Yes. If, if your opponent is of choleric temper, seek to irritate him. That's in the Art of War, mm, right? Mm. So if you see a little bit of that, 
you know, that is a, a martial tool. Mm -hmm. That is a martial tool. Um, People used to say that, you know, oh, Mike Tyson beat his opponents before he got there. Yeah. And I think there is some truth yeah. to that line. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. And the early days, Conor McGregor uh, did yes, the very same thing, right. you know, um, and... But it has to be authentic yeah. to the person. Yes, it, does. it was authentic yeah. for Mike Tyson to, ah, yeah. I'm going to destroy yeah. him, you yeah. know, yeah. I'm, an, I'm a vicious animal. And it was authentic for Conor McGregor yeah. To, yeah. to, you know, yeah. I don't want to imitate him because yeah. I can't yeah. do the accent. But um, what's interesting is there are other fighters and they're George St. Pierre. Yeah. He would get into it a bit with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not impressed with your performance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But he. That was inauthentic. But he, he didn't really said he even didn't that. Yeah. like that he yeah, did yeah. that. And yeah. then. That was actually damaging to yeah. himself because yeah. he felt that he lost control of his ego. Yeah, exactly. And that was important yeah. to him to keep control of his mm -hmm. ego. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it has to be authentic. It has to be authentic. Even the way, if Ross started like typing in all caps and, and yelling at and putting on, that wouldn't be authentic to him. But right. so, man, I just, I don't know what the big deal is. I just did this thing. That I don't know what, be. That, that's authentic to him. Yeah. So I don't think he's acting. I think he's just being himself. But I think deep down he knows that there is value in, in undermining the performance of your opponent. Mm -hmm. And it may not work. And if it does, that's a key to it too, is when you, if you seek to, to undermine your opponent's performance and it doesn't work, you have to be okay with that. Mm. We don't need it to happen. It's really important that we don't need it to happen. Right. Because if it doesn't happen, now we're, we're screwed, right? right? You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you require him to be compromised, psychologically or emotionally compromised. Yeah. You don't want to be. And Ross is on, what's the big deal? As a boy, I have felt that I was in that situation where like, I've got to convince this much larger kid that I'm way too crazy. I'm a sad, I'm an animal. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't want anything to do with fighting me after mm -hmm. school because I knew if we actually yeah. fought after school, yeah. I was in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, that's when you start realizing, yo, I do need to learn martial arts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because when someone yeah. calls your bluff yeah, or they right. just don't care, yeah. they're they're not as risk averse as you were hoping. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Because if it is mandatory that you that you affect them psychologically and you don't, you you've put yourself in a bad situation, yeah. right? Uh, but yeah, all of that is part of it. Like, you know, we get to, because this is a different sport, this mm -hmm. is a different art form, this is a different, there are different environments and parameters, we get to use different ways to look at it now. Yeah. And that's what is one of the things so incredibly refreshing about being able to do this here. Being able to analyze these fighters, karate combat, you know, is because we can do it this way. We don't have to do it the way that, you know, corporate, sports entertainment does it. Yeah. And shout out to Karate Combat for giving me the freedom to have this conversation. They said, hey, you have an hour with uh, Mr. Robin Black. Uh, what do you want to do with him? I walked up to the man, I introduced myself, and we said, this is what we wanted yeah. to do together. Yeah. <laughs> and came to yeah. it together, and, and here we are. Yeah, and hopefully somebody, you know, somebody might see little short clips of this, and maybe there's something of value, and if they're still, if they watch 40 minutes of us talking, or an hour of us talking, hopefully they got some value in it. At the very least, we didn't just do the thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. this main event is epic, you know, two yeah, yeah, dynamite yeah. <laughs> warriors. You know, uh, if you can keep this thing going, uh, you, this is uses powerful right hand, but you got to watch out for the low kicks of this guy. <laughs> That's all nonsense. And, I, and, and it is, when I say it like that, I don't mean, you know, that being able to manipulate space isn't a real thing. Of course it's a real of thing. Of course, yes. Of course it's a real thing, right? Landing, using a rhythm with which to throw your, your leg kicks. I mean, these are real things. There are things. technical realities. Yeah, these are, all, yeah. these are all real things. But here's the issue. When we go and we do that, we put on a suit and the camera B, and now I'm like doing the thing, and yeah, but you know, if he can defend the takedown, and like, you know, right. we do that thing. The reason it's nonsense is because like most of the information is not available to us. Yeah. We don't know who's sick. We don't know who's injured. We don't know whose mom called and she's got cancer. Right. We don't. We don't know. You know whose father. You know, like all. We don't know who has diarrhea from the weight cut. That's right. Those things are all more important than my opinion of you know distance management. Yeah. All of them. How many are more, hours were yeah. your flight delayed? Exactly. It goes on and on. All of those things are far more important than you know. Uh, Knockout power. The power. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, this guy's got the speed advantage, but this guy's got the power advantage. We can say that all we like, but it's less important than the things we don't know. So we are being inauthentic. We are, we are, we are misrepresenting the truth when we tell you 
you know, so who you got? Oh, bro, you know, I got Scrivers in this one. You know, it's just too, his movement is just too dynamic, you know, the way that he, you know, the way he manages the And the though range, it is. Yeah, although those things are true, they are this much of the truth. And all the other unknowns are more important. So we're not lying, but we are misrepresenting the reality of it. And we are misrepresenting it by pretending that we know, or thinking we know. You know, the, the only truthful answer to who you got is, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know who's going to win this fight. I, and often, uh, we will not be allowed to do that. Not here. Here, they're like, hey, man, talk about martial arts. Cool. Like, right. That's what we're doing. But in a lot of cases, and I do this, this is what I do for a living. I, I travel around the world and, and analyze fighting, which I can't even believe I said that, and that it's true. Uh, it's crazy. But, but sometimes, somebody will, they would be like, no, you need to make a pick. Now, in my mind, if I reject my own opinion of who I think might win, I will learn more. Uh -huh. I will gain more information about the truth of this fight, and therefore the truth of life itself, if I reject my, you know, uh, I think Scrivers by knockout, or, you know, I think uh, Roca is going to, you know, get it back, or whatever. Uh -huh. uh, if I reject that, I will learn more. But at times, they'll be like, no, you, uh, who do you got? Oh, I got Scrivers? Oh, you got Roca? Okay, great, guys, d debate. And we'll hold that line. You yes. know, no, bro, but the thing about Scrivers, you know, the way he uses his inside strikes, right. yeah, but you know, since they fought last time, he's landed so many body kicks, you know, and it, I think if you can get that foot uh, really moving, you get a slightly different rhythm and, and target the liver, I think you can have fine results. And though we may both actually believe those yeah. things, and though they may both be true from our vantage mm -hmm. points, yes. uh, it is a bit of performance art. It is, and... We, I truly believe we're doing a disservice to society. I know that sounds yeah, heavy. Great, yeah. I know that sounds like, dude, you're just talking about fighting. But if, if regular people are literally just watching people argue and never change their mind, we're teaching the world that that's normal human behavior, that that's the way to behave. Uh, choose some, the first thing at random that you believe to be true, defend that to the death, uh, because that's what they do on TV. Thank you so much for this brilliant conversation. I wish I had more time with you, sir. I would extract as much brilliance as I can. I want a full dram of this man's brilliance. Um, it's been a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Robin Black. Thank you, Thank you so much. I've been Dane Curley, and this is Mr. Robin Black. Enjoy the hostilities, my friends.